Okie dokie. This is the National 5 2023 Chemistry Section 2 um, walkthrough of what I suspect are the correct answers. However, as I've always said before, I am not an SQA marker. I have not seen a marking scheme. This is just my thoughts as a chemistry teacher on what I think the uh, acceptable answers are going to be. And remember, if uh, the whole idea of seeing answers like this makes you nervous uh, or makes you uh, sort of anxious or whatever, please don't watch this video. If you're still sitting exams, you should go and study for them and not worry about past exams. However, having said that, if you're still watching, I'm now going to take you through what I think are the acceptable answers for the 2023 National 5 chemistry paper. Okay, right. Question number one, it's asking you to state in the number of elements, including chlorine that exist as diatomic molecules. I teach this as have no fear of ice cold beer, which means there are seven elements that are the diatomics. Question B, you're given information on a sample of chlorine that contains two isotopes. They have masses of 35 and 37. Um, the average mass of the sample is 35.5. It's asking you what the most common isotope in this a sample is going to be. It's going to be 35 because it is closer to 35.5, which is the average mass of the sample. Um, so that's that one. C, you have to name an element that has similar chemical properties to chlorine. Any in group 7 will be fine. So fluorine, bromine and iodine. It, it, it could have also said astatine, I think. That would be a possibility. Okay. Uh, your magnesium chloride is an ionic compound containing magnesium ions and chloride ions. The nuclear notation for these two ions are shown. You have to complete the table to show the number of electrons and neutrons in these ions. In the first one here, we have 24, 12 Mg2+. Plus. That has lost two electrons, so it's got a 10. And for this one here, uh, your number of neutrons is the mass number, take away the atomic number, which is 20. Okay, right. Hopefully you've started off well, and you're saying, yeah, that's what I got. I hope so. Let me just let me adjust this camera a wee bit. Okay, right, a question two. You to state the term used to describe compounds that contain only carbon and hydrogen atoms. That is hydrocarbons. Ethene can be produced from ethane as shown. State in the name of chemical X. So we are making hydrogen. You to describe the chemical test including the result to show that ethene is unsaturated. The bromine water turns colourless upon addition to an alkene, so it goes from brown to colourless. You have to draw the full structural formula for ethane, which has got a triple bond, so my triple bonds between the carbons and two hydrogens on the left and the right. This is a bit of a problem solving question because we don't typically show you ethane in the National Five. You actually see that in the advanced higher, I think. So, yeah, a little bit of a problem-solving question there. That's an interesting one to put in, and I suppose it makes a lot of sense these days to have questions like that. So I'm going to show with it. Ethane can be used as a fuel. You have to name the products, form, so that this is just a combustion reaction of a hydrocarbon, um, and that's always going to give you carbon dioxide and water. Okay. Yeah, the burning of a fuel is an exothermic a reaction state what is meant by the term exothermic well that's when you have energy released to the surroundings um, okay you can probably hear my dog in the background if you can i do apologize that she can be a bit noisy at times okay the columns in the periodic table are known as groups state a group number in which all the elements are metals you may wish 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 to use a data booklet to help you. This one was interesting to me and I think they were trying to catch you out because a lot of people might say group one. However, 
hydrogen is in group one, and that's a non-metal. And there's lots of debate as to whether hydrogen should be in group one or should be in group seven. We're not going to get into that right now. If you're interested in that sort of thing, it, 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 you can look it up. However, group two are all metals, and I suspect that that, that is what they're wanting you to say. However, it'd be interesting to see if there's other answers that are acceptable to that. Uh, but yeah, we'll find out. Okay, we've got some information here. The question is that you have to write the formula for potassium permanganate and you may wish to use a data booklet to help you. The formula is KMNO4. The potassium has a positive charge and the permanganate's got a negative charge, MNO4 minus. B part two. I don't know the answer to this. And I've tried using the data booklet. I've tried having a look th through. There might be something I'm missing here. However, out of the entire exam, this is the one question. I, I don't know the answer. And I'm not going to sit here and make up something off the hoof. I'm just going to leave it. And I'm going to say, you know what? I'm not too sure. Um, when I see bright light, I think of magnesium. However... Yeah, magnesium is a blinding white light. So, uh, unless I am missing something here, which if I am, I'd love you to tell me in the comments. However, I'm not too sure on that one. So I am I am going to opt out and I'm going to skip it. Okay. 3C. You have to complete the table naming the gas that would be produced when dilute hydrochloric acid and some of your metals react. You always get a hydrogen gas, um, and the test is that it's going to burn with a squeaky pop, okay? Question D. It was shown in an electrochemical cell. Um, it is also shown um, in the table. Uh, you were to compare the voltages that you get, and you'll see that iron sits in the middle, but closer to tin. Um in the electrochemical series. So, I've went for one volt. H however, this will be interesting. I've put a question mark next to it. I'm not sure what the what the plus or m m minus is going to be on that. I don't know. Um, and I wouldn't like to guess. So, yeah, that's what I've went for. Right, D part two. You have to state what uh, when an electrolyte is. It's a substance containing ions that allows a movement of charge. That's what I would say it is. However, I'm not 100% sure on whether or not that's what they're going to want for a mark. I'm also interested to see what that one's going to look like. I think that's what it is. That's what my answer would be. If someone asked me to explain an electrolyte, I, I, that's what I would say. However, I, I'm looking forward to seeing the answer scheme. Finally, and it is finally for question three. Uh, D part three, you, you to suggest one factor that should be kept constant to make the experiment fair. I've gone for the concentration of electrolyte. Um, and I think that um, is what they're going to be looking for there. Okay, right. This was just reading the passage. Um, so if you read through the passage, it, it, the first one is air. So um, that's just straight from the passage. If you like these questions where you've got to read a passage and answer questions on it. Um, part B is asking you about your knowledge of catalysts. Um, so an advantage of using catalysts is that they speed up chemical reactions. State another advantage of using catalysts. They are unchanged after the, the reaction and can be used again. And I think that's what they're looking for you to say. Right, you have to calculate the number of moles of carbon dioxide required to produce 5 litres of jet fuel using the new catalyst. So, up here, they've told you 4,700 grams of atmospheric CO2 can be turned into 1 litre of jet fuel. Okay? So, 4,700 grams of CO2 is 1 litre. So you would multiply that by 5 to give you 2,500 grams of CO2 in 5 litres. And then your number of moles is your mass over your GFM. So 23,500 over 44, which is 534.1 moles. 
Okay, and that is that one there. All right. Okay. As I said, I'm leaving open enders on this channel. I am going to do some videos on um, on open enders, but I'm not going to speculate on what they would um, accept here. There's a huge amount of information that they could accept. I'm just going to move on. Okay, right, question six. You have to name the functional group circled. That is a carboxyl group. Um, okay, that's what that is. It's a carboxyl group. Um, 6A part 2, you have to state the type of reaction that takes place when monomers join to form a polymer. That is an addition polymerization. Um, there are other types of polymerization. There are condensation polymerizations that you learn about in the higher chemistry. You only see a, 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 um, addition polymerization now, so I, I expect they're wanting you to say addition. However, it'd be interesting to see if they also accept polymerization as well. Right, you are to draw a section of the polymer showing the three monomer units joined together. You need to just draw three of these with the double bond taken out, joined up, and there needs to be two of the bonds on either end here. They, if, they, if I remember rightly from past marking schemes, they probably won't accept your answer if you haven't placed the bonds on either end. Okay, right. on to this next bit then. So there's a whole lot of information here. I'm going to let you pause the video and read this if you would like to read it. Um, using the graph, you have to identify the combination of material and salt solution that results in the most swelling. Okay, that is going to be material A and cesium chloride. Okay. And finally, you have to draw a bar on the graph to show the expected swelling for material A in a salt solution of strontium chloride SrCl2. I think this is going to be in, in the middle. If you look at this, it's increasing as we're going down group 2. So I suspect it's going to be in the middle. Okay, like that. Okay. Um, I shouldn't have investigated the time taken for different masses of another material to absorb 170 meters cubed of water. I should have used a beaker to measure the 170 meters cubed of water. It suggests a more appropriate piece of apparatus. You can say a measuring cylinder or a 170 meter cubed pipette. This one here, you have just to plot are your results now I always like to put time on the bottom however I think there's an argument here for potentially putting a time along the y-axis and mass along the bottom so that it's going like that rather than a downward slope however I suspect you will get the marks either way around as long as it's been plotted correctly and your line of best fit is correct. Okay, it'll be interesting to see what the marking scheme is for that. Okay, on to question seven here then. So the silanes are a homologous series containing atoms of silicon and hydrogen only. The table shows data for some silanes. You have to name the third member of the silane family. So if the first one was mono, the second one is di. This one must be tri-silane. I can't see any other answer that's going to be um, acceptable there. You have to calculate, if for, part, if for part B, you have to calculate the number of hydrogen atoms present in a molecule of pentasilane. It's going to be 12. If we're looking at the trends, it's got to be 12. Okay. You have to predict the boiling point in degrees Celsius of hexasilane. My initial instinct was 185 degrees uh, Celsius. However, I'm wondering if it's maybe 190 plus or minus something. My initial reasoning was that uh, the rise is getting smaller as you go up. So I thought that it's maybe a difference of about 32, 35-ish for this bit here, but it could be as much as 40. So not 
100 percent certain on that one if there will be a range and you'll just need to wait to see the mark of the screen for that because it's a difficult one to decide isn't it um okay you've two draw a diagram showing all the outer electrons for a molecule of mono silane this is my little drawing here i've made a little bit of a mess of it um, around about it, it, the electrons in here um however i think it should be okay it clearly shows all of the electrons inside the bonds um and there's eight electrons in total um, and it's in the correct shape so it should be okay explain why pentasilane has a higher boiling point than a, a, a tetrasilane so pentasilane has more atoms which means it's got more electrons stronger intermolecular forces and therefore you need more energy uh, to break these attractive forces and hence uh, the boiling point is larger okay calculation here you've to calculate the mass of di silane in grams that would be produced from the reaction of six grams of silicon dioxide so I calculated in a GFM of SiO2, which is here, 60.1. I then said we've got 6 grams of it, so 6 over 60.1. I rounded up to 0 0.1. Okay. It's a 2 to 1 molar ratio. So 2 SiO2 to 1 disilane. So we need to divide the number of moles by 2 to get our moles of the disilane so our moles of that is going to be 0 0.05 and then we multiply uh, the mass of the disilane by uh, the number of moles that we need and as you can see i'm going over this now and i've made a little mistake i've pulled the wrong number of moles whoops so very, very quickly, we'll need to divide that by 2 and our correct answer will be 3.11 grams. Okay, just sh sh shows you even though I've been doing this for a very long time, um, still make lots of errors and that's why we need you guys in the classroom to point out when we're making mistakes okay that was a silly one but anyway it's been fixed hopefully you, you didn't make that mistake <clears throat> okay you have to read the passage i'm not going to read it if you read the passage the answer was fluoro appetite okay i can never say that word properly you have to write the molecular formula for the chemical used to purify phosphoric acid um so again this is the chemical here you were just to count up the number of carbons and whatnot so c5h12o um is what we went for there okay continuing on and again you're reading the passage and the answer was nitrogen for the other m element and it was found in adp so ADP is there, and they already gave you phosphorus, you were to say nitrogen. Okay. Sodium phosphate can also be used as a fertilizer as it contains phosphorus. It suggests a property of sodium phosphate that would make it suitable for use of, if for use as, sorry, a fertilizer. It's water soluble, I think, and that's all we're looking for there. Uh, to calculate the percentage by mass of a phosphorus in phosphoric acid, um, H3PO4. So um, I worked out my GFM, which is 98, and then I did uh, the mass of the phosphorus over the 98 at times 100, which is 31.6%. You have to name a technique that could be used to separate the calcium sulfate from the phosphoric acid. Filtration. Okay. And then I finally state it. it in the number of moles of water present for every one mole of calcium sulfate in the hemihydrate form that was just for here 
So they told you that that was two moles, so that there is a half. Okay. That was just reading from the question. I quite liked that one actually. I felt that was quite a good question. So yeah, I quite liked it. Something different. Um, right. The energy stored in foods can be determined using the experiment shown. This is just an EH equals CM delta T calculation. I thought this was nice. Um, it, um, it was set out really nice and the kids uh, were going to be able to access this. I thought it was good. So um, you just need to calculate your difference in temperature, which is 15 degrees. You need to know to get the specific heat capacity from uh, the data booklet, which is 4.18. And it's your mass of water in kilograms, which is 0 0.01 kilograms. Shove all that into a calculator and you should get 0 0.627 kilojoules, okay? Right. In the experiment, the amount of energy absorbed by the water is lower than the expected value. You have to suggest why the value in the experiment is lower. Heat lost to the surroundings is going to be my answer. There's maybe a couple more that you could say, um, but... Uh, the easy win here is just heat loss. So that's what I'm going to go with. You have to calculate the energy in kilocalories that would be found in a 30 gram biscuit. So 30 grams, 20.9 times a 30, that gives you 627 kilojoules. Um, 627 uh, divided by 4.18 is 150 kilocalories. Okay, that's that one. Okay, right. Cesium is a highly reactive metal that was first extracted from an ore in the late 1800s. Suggest a method used to extract cesium metal from its ore. I've gone that it's highly reactive um, and therefore you need to use electrolysis. During the extraction of cesium from its ore, the cesium ions are changed to cesium atoms. You have to name this type of chemical reaction. If you're going from ions to atoms, then you must be accepting electrons. So that's a reduction. You have to write the nuclide notation for a beta particle. You can either go for a 0, negative 1, E, or in a, in a beta symbol like that. Okay. Cesium-137 is used in industry to measure the thickness of materials such as paper and sheets of metal. It suggests a reason why an alpha particle emitting radioactive isotope is not suitable for this purpose. It can't pass through these materials, so therefore it's no use. You could also maybe talk about the fact that alpha radiation is quite harmful. That may also be something that can be mentioned. Not sure though. Okay, 10b part 3. The half-life of cesium-137 is 30 years. We have to stay what is meant by the term half-life. It's the time it takes for a radioactive sample's activity or mass to half from its original value. Um, I think that's what they'll be looking for. It'll be interesting to see what they say. Um, but, yeah. We have to calculate the fraction of cesium-137 that will have decayed after 120 years. I like this question. I thought it was quite uh, a different spin on uh, the usual types of questions that we see. So 120 years is the is, uh, uh, total time and the half-life is 30 years. So at time zero, uh, there will be 100% or one whole amount of the uh, radioactive substance. After 30 years, there will be half left. After 60, there will be a quarter. After 90, there will be 1 8th, and after 120, there will be 1 16th. However, it's asking how much of the fraction has decayed after 150 years. So, it's how much have you lost. So, 16 over 16 has gone to 1 over 16. So, 15 over 16 has decayed. Tricky little question. It might have caught some people out. I reckon there will be two marks if we're getting to here. Um, 
and then the final mark it, it, it will be for actually st stating how much it's decayed. Okay, tungsten 6 fluoride is used in the electronics industry. It's a toxic colourless gas at room temperature. Circle the correct words to complete the sentence. If it's a colourless gas, then that means it must be covalent if it's a gas at room temperature. And therefore it must be a molecular structure. So covalent molecular. Okay, you're just to balance the uh, equation for part B. Um, I've balanced it there. Hopefully I've balanced it right. And um, I did it very quickly, if it, if it looks okay. All right. And then last two questions then. With the described the relationship between the concentration of hydrogen ions and the concentration of hydroxide ions in a solution of hydrofluoric acid, there are more hydrogen ions than hydroxide ions. So H plus a higher concentration than OH minus. And finally, a tungsten 6 a fluoride can react to form a tungsten 4 a fluoride. Complete that ion electron equation for the reaction um, of these ions uh, 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 by adding electrons. So we've got 6 plus on that side and 4 plus on that side. You must be adding 2 electrons. Okay, and the last bit is the open enders, which I'm not uh, going to comment on. Okay. Alrighty. I hope that that was useful for you. Um, thank you for taking the time to watch this. Um, and if you're still s sitting exams, I hope they go well. If you've seen this and you've maybe not done as well as you had hoped, and remember, this is just the beginning of your academic sort of journey. Um, you have a number of years at school to get to be able to catch up on things and be able to get the qualifications that you needed to move on to your next step. This is not the be, the be all and end all. So just make sure that you remember that um, and uh, just make sure you take a, a care of yourselves, okay? Right, all the best.